You know, a, a number of people have uh, have expressed some surprise that I would cover something like not possible in real life uh, on Metanomics because it seems so much more art than uh, business. Uh, so my title for connecting the dots today is business is the art of the impossible. So a few weeks ago, I had the good fortune to attend a talk by Linden Lab uh, President and Chairman Philip Rosedale, who was speaking at the Tech Museum uh, in California. Of course, I was here in my office in Ithaca, participating virtually through Second Life. Uh, I asked during the Q&A session, uh, I asked Philip why so much of the content in Second Life looked like real life. And he responded by saying, uh, people covet what they know. Uh, and then he pointed out that everyone knows Malibu from television shows and everyone wants to live there. And that's why most of Second Life looks like Malibu. Uh, well. Let's leave aside the humor uh, of a top executive channeling Hannibal Lecter from Silence of the Lambs uh, and, uh, and leave aside that, that to me Second Life looks a lot more like Ithaca, New York than Malibu. Uh, instead, what I want to emphasize is that the real reason we see so much of real life in Second Life is that it's easier to remake the familiar than to come up with something new. And that is going to pose a real problem for for the virtual worlds industry uh, because doing something new is what successful industries do. Doing what didn't seem possible before. Call it the art of the impossible. Now, doing the impossible requires technological innovation, and, and we see lots of that. We see plenty of that in the virtual world industry. Every day on websites like Virtual Worlds News, we see stories of jaw-dropping uh, new technologies. Uh, you, can, you can move your avatar with your mind now. I think that's my favorite story of the week out of Drexel University. Uh, the, uh, the, this rate of technological innovation convinces me that it won't be long before we can use virtual virtual worlds for education, uh, for the distributed workplace, for entertainment, online shopping. Uh, I'm, frankly, I'm, I'm not worried uh, about the technology. I'm more worried that we won't be able to do the impossible with that technology. We have to learn how to use virtual worlds to compete against the more traditional ways of doing the same thing. Okay, so uh, Christian Renault, formerly, formerly of uh, Cisco Systems, has said to me several times, why make virtual collaboration just as effective as face-to-face -face when we can make it so much better? Uh, what's the best way to conduct a virtual meeting? H how can we use 3D visualization tools to communicate information in ways that flat screens and web pages uh, and uh, Cisco's WebEx technology can't? Uh, how do we teach a class or reach out to customers better than uh, with a classroom or a web survey or traditional media advertising? If we're going to do something better than real life, we're going to need people who are trying to do the impossible with the tools that they have today. That is what successful industries do. And that's why I'm so glad to be celebrating the first birthday of Not Possible in Real Life by having its leader, Bettina Tizzi, on Metadomics. Thanks a lot, everyone, and see you next week.